Miss Duke and welcome to another first chapter Friday. Today I'm going to be reading Simon Sort of Says by Aaron Bow. Um, this is one of our new books in the library. It's a young adult fiction humor story. So if you're looking for something funny and you're in seventh or eighth grade or have parent permission to read young adult in sixth grade, this might be the book for you. Um, the first chapter that I'm going to be reading is called in which we are driven out of Omaha by alpacas. So already we got a pretty funny title here. So people are always asking where my family came to the national quiet zone. Like we need a reason. I mean, who wouldn't want to live in a place with no internet and no cell phones and no TV and no radio? Who wouldn't, who wouldn't want to live surrounded by emu farms in a town that's half astrophysicists and a half people who are afraid of their microwaves? I mean, isn't that the American dream? Hint. No, obviously there's a story. So when people ask, I tell them we left Omaha because we were driven out by all the hackers. Back in Omaha, my dad, who's a Catholic deacon, was the liturgical director at one of the big churches in the suburbs. That means he planned the masses and things like a wedding planner, but for Jesus. One of the highlights of his year was the Feast of St. Francis, where they blessed animals. The animal blessing can be a little tricky even when it's just cats and dogs, plus the handful of four-year-olds who bring gerbils in cages and goldfish in bowls. People aren't always super smart about it. They don't think, you know, there are going to be dogs, so maybe Mr. Tuna should stay in his kitty carrier for the hour-long mass. Usually at least one cat climbs on at least one head. But the year we had to leave, my dad forgot to make a list of pets you can bring, and this is the important part, pets you cannot bring. So in addition to the cats and dogs, there was a pot pig, two alpacas, a giant tortoise, a great horned owl named, and a great horned owl named Sandy. St. Francis could talk to wolves, but Father Kirk was not so blessed. Three years ago, a freaked out tomcat named Pinky got spooked by the bulldog in line behind him. He leaped from his owner ar owner's arms and took refuge under Father Kirk's vestments. Pinky clawed his way up Father Kirk's leg and, well, Let's just say it's a good thing Father Kirk had already taken a vow of celibacy. The pinky incident marked a real turning point in the relationship between Father Kirk and my dad, who likes to embrace what he calls a little holy chaos. When he plans church stuff, St. Francis would probably approve, but Father Kirk did not. And last year, the alpacas, the ones my dad forgot to ban. There were two of them and they were being led up the aisle for a blessing when one of them blinked its cartoon eyelashes and stopped so abruptly that the tortoise being pulled up the aisle behind them slid off the back of its dolly and started to make a slow break for freedom. The frozen alpaca stood looking at the altar, and some kind of ancestral memory kicked in about things that used to happen on altars. And it stood there blinking its big Bambi eyes, looking cute and seeing blood and knives, and then it made this noise. The noise started low, like someone had sat on a whoopee cushion. But as her owner tugged on her halter, the alpaca, whose name was Beth, got louder. She unhinged her jaw and made a noise like a bagpipe gurgling. And then the other alpaca started in, and it sounded like angry Scots with chest colds who were coming to kill us all. The acoustics were very good in our old church. Sometimes musical ensembles would come and record their albums there. So the noise carried as the alpacas debuted their debut for panicky death visions. The dogs started howling and the cats started making that noise like opera singers who've been kicked in their privates. And Sandy the great horned owl tore away from their, his owner's glove, circled among the pillars for a long moment and then swooped down to eat Mr. Tuna. Father Kirk came dashing down the aisle to help and the alpaca spit all over his vestments. Sandy, the great horned owl, landed on the altar with Mr. Tuna's body in tow. The media was there, and my father got fired. There aren't many jobs out there for liturgical directors. There wasn't another one in all of Omaha, but my mother is an undertaker, and undertakers can work anywhere. And that's why we came here. Anyway, that's what I tell people. So again, this is the first chapter of Simon Sort of Says by Aaron Bow. Come check it out in the library.